Okay. Let's do uh, three examples of a projectile. The first one is my example D. This is a problem found in a survey book. Um, we've got an airplane that's flying 100 meters off the ground. So there's an airplane 100 meters off the ground. And this airplane is in a level horizontal flight. And the airplane is going to release uh, what appears to be some emergency rations to a stranded group of uh, hikers or something like that. Oh, excuse me, explorers. So they're going to release this food. The plane is traveling at 40 meters per second horizontally. So we've got a VOX of 40 meters per second. The plane is at 100 meters off the ground. What that means is my Y initial I'll call zero. My Y final I'll call negative 100. So there's my Y values as I begin to work this problem. It's going to be released and take this nice little parabolic path to the ground. And the problem wants us to find X in there. Where does the pack package strike the ground? relative to the points of release. And that's what it's asking for in point A. So it's asking us to find X. Well, I only know of one equation that's any good in the X dimension of a projectile. And that is X equals VOXT. Well, the good thing is VOX we have. Well, we also have VOY. VOY is equal to, we talked about this in the earlier film, Look, it's moving perfectly horizontal. There is no up, there is no down. The vertical in this problem at the initial point is a zero. Okay, so if I'm going to find X, and I know VOX, I've got to find time. Now, if you've paid attention before, I said your first equation when thinking about time is usually the second equation. Y is equal to VOYT plus one-half AT squared. Now, the handy thing in this one is, once again, VOY is equal to zero. So that cancels out. So we can go straight for Y equals one-half AT squared. So this is going to be negative 100 equals half of negative 9.8 T squared. Uh, so we're going to end up with, their negatives are going to cancel, so we're going to have 100 divided by half of 9.8 is 4.9, divided by 4.9, and that's 20.4, but we still need to take a square root, so the square root of that answer is 4.52 seconds. So it takes 4.52 seconds for the package to reach the ground. The package is traveling horizontally at 40 meters per second, and that gives us a final speed or a distance. If we work it out, 40 times 4.52, 180.8. So I'm going to round off and say we had 181 meters of distance traveled. So I'll call this my point part A. There is a part B in that question. Part B wants to know what at the end, when it hits the ground, what are the horizontal, what is your VX component, and what is your VY component as it strikes the ground. Now VX is easy because we already know it never changes. VOX is 40, which means VX is also 40. There's no acceleration in the X dimension of the projectile. So we need to find this VY. Well, we already have a time, so the easiest thing for us to find is going to end up being the first equation. VY equals VOY plus AT. Once again, our VOY was zero for this type of projectile. So that's gone. So VY is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second square times 4.52 seconds. So let's see if we can do this. 9.8 times 4.52, 44.3. So we've got a negative 44.3 meter per second velocity. 
And that's our VY component. Now, this problem didn't, let's see, ask anything else. All it asked was the components of the velocity at ground. Now, there's also a, uh, anytime you have two vectors, you have a resultant velocity as well. If we wanted to find that resultant velocity, all we'd have to do is let's look at the point where it strikes the ground. When it strikes the ground, we had a VX of 40, and we had a VY value of negative 44.3. I'm just going to write 44.3, though. The negative was just to show that it was headed down. So if we wanted to find a resultant of these two velocities, not only could we find a resultant velocity, we could also find this angle that it strikes the ground at as well. If we want to find this resultant, all we need to do is take the square root of our x and y components. So 40 square plus 44.3 square. So 40 square plus 40. 4.3 square. Does that take a square root of that answer? 59.7. So this would be a 59.7 meter per second velocity as it strikes the ground. If we want to find this angle, all we'd have to do is use tangent. Theta would be equal to tan negative 1 of the opposite. The opposite would be the y value. So the opposite is your y, which is 44.3. Your adjacent value would be the x, which is 40. So I'm just going to take a shift tangent of 44.3 divided by 40. Close up the parentheses real nice there. And that's 47.9 47.9 degrees. So we can even find that angle. The problem didn't ask us to find anything other than the X and Y components, the 40 and the negative 44.3. I just went ahead and found this resultant and found this angle because sometimes you will work a problem and you'll be asked to find that very thing. All right. The next problem we're going to end up working is known as the long jumper problem in the textbook. If I can get me on paper here. And in this problem, it is somebody long jumping. And this is that perfect little projectile. Let's see if I can get me a little baseline started. This person leaves the ground at actually a very low angle, just 20 degrees. So they leave the ground at a low angle of 20 degrees. They're not going to get too high off the ground. And then they'll hit the ground over here. All right. So we've got an initial velocity. In my problem, we've been given a VO of 11 meters per second. We are giving an angle of, it looks like, 20 degrees in the problem. And let's see here. How far does he jump? So we're actually looking for X. Now, first thing I want to do is find the VOX, and I want to find my VOY components as well. Well, VOX is VO cosine theta, so that's going to be 11 cosine 20. VOY is VO sine theta, so that's going to be 11 sine of 20. So let's look at our two values. So 11 cosine 20. 11 cosine of 20 is 10.3 meters per second. And let's see if we can just backspace over that. 11 sine of 20 is 3.76 meters per second. So there's our two velocities in this problem. We've got our VOY and our VOX. It's wanting us to find X. Well, once again, the only equation, any good in the X dimension, is VOXT. Now, this is a problem that we could use the range equation on, but I'm not going to do it. So if I've found VOX already, 
There's my VOX. I'm just over here looking to find X. So I need this T. Well, once again, while the equation, have I said, is always like really handy for finding time. Go to the second equation. Uh, y is equal to VOYT plus one half AT squared. Now, the neat thing about this problem is this. Your initial and starting points are the exact same thing, which means your y value is zero. So this is zero equals VOYT plus one half AT squared. So, sorry, a little stutter there for a second. Now, if this is zero, that T cancels this square. So if you want to find time, zero is equal to 3.76 times half of negative 9.8, which is negative 4.9 T. So 3.76 divided by 4.9, be both negatives when it's over, but anyway, we're going to come out 0.77 seconds for time and now all we got to do is come back up here 10.3 meters per second times 0.77 for a time 0.77 is 7.9 meters so there's our answer to the long jumper. He's going to travel 7.9 meters. Uh, it also asks in the question the second thing. This was the answer to part A. Part B asks how high. So part B is actually wanting to know how high off the ground does the long jumper get. Alright, I can go ahead and make this one easy. What equation have I said before for maximum height is always one of the easiest ones to use. If you're looking for maximum height, one of the easiest things to do is use the third equation. Because what is VY at the top point? VY is equal to zero at the very top. So if I want to find how high, all I got to do is go to the third equation. VY squared equals VOY squared plus 2AY and that would be 0 equals 3.76 square. 2 times negative 9.8 is negative 19.6y. So 3.76 square divided by 19.6 is 0.72 meters. There's your maximum Y value. That's your answer for part, excuse me, I said C, but it's really a B in this problem. All right, so there's the long jumper question. Again, this is that nice, perfect projectile. All right, let's do one more example here. And this is one of those where something's being thrown off of a roof. And you could do the same problem and be off of a cliff. There's what the problem looks like. Somebody standing on top of a cliff, 45 meters tall. They're throwing a ball at an angle. It's landing down here. And let's see what it wants us to find out about this problem. Again, all these problems are coming from a Survey and Vaughn, I think, 7th edition book is what I teach in class from. All right. A stone is thrown upward from the top of a building at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Let's first, let's draw this problem out. So let's draw our building. Let's draw it back this way. And so the building's 45 meters tall. Uh, the stone is being thrown at an angle an angle of 30 degrees with a speed of 20. So we've got a 20 meters per second VO. Sorry, I'm writing small. We've got an angle of 30 degrees. And what I want to find first is VOX. And I would like to find my VOI. 
values first. VOX would be equal to 20 cosine of 30. VOY would be equal to 20 sine of 30. Well, good thing is that one's going to be easy. Sine of 30 is a half of 20. So we've got VOY of 10 meters per second. VOX would be uh, roughly 17. Let's see, 20 cosine 30. 17.3, pretty close. So, found my VO. Notice that I went ahead and found VOX and VOY before I even worked the problem. Because I knew it's a projectile, I need to try and find those things first. So, here comes the projectile up into the air, and then here it begins its descent. back on the way down. So here is our projectile. Not exactly a perfect parabola, but not too terrible. All right, let's see what it says. Uh, what does it want us to find the problem? How long is the stone in flight? So what we're looking for is time of flight in this first one. And once again, what equation have I said to go to for time, if you can? The second equation. So Y is equal to VOY T plus one half a t square. Uh, our y value at this final point is going to be negative 45. This is our initial point that we call our zero. So for reference, this would be our negative 45. So we've got negative 45 equals voy, which is 10 t plus one half of negative 9.8, which is negative 4.9 t squared. So this is 0 equals 45 plus 10 t minus 4.9 t squared. Uh, now you can see our quadratic, A, B, C. Just to speed it up, I'm going to cheat on that quadratic and put a calculator into... Uh, Mode, mode, quadratic mode. One, two, A is negative 4.9, B is 10, C is 45, negative 2.17, and 4.2 for my second answer. So time is equal to the value of 4.2 seconds. So there is my answer for this first one, 4.2 seconds. The second wants to know what is the speed of the stone just before it strikes the ground. So this problem is actually wanting us to find, and we did this a second ago, it's wanting us to find the VX and the VY components, and then it's wanting us to find a resultant V in this problem is actual an angle. Now, I'm going to take the same picture and redraw it down here a little bit bigger. So VX, VY, and then let's find this resultant. Uh, it didn't ask us to find the angle. It just wants this velocity. We already know VX. We found it. It never changes. It's 17.3. So that is 17.3. And if we want to find VY, no problem. VY is VOY plus AT. Our VOY was 10. So this is 10 plus negative 9.8 times 4.2 seconds. Plug that in our calculator. Take it out of my... Uh, mode 10 plus negative 9.8 times 4.2, close my parentheses up, negative 31.2 meters per second. So there is that. So all I have to do is this would be the square root of 31.2 square plus 17.3 square. All I'm doing is taking the Pythagorean. So 31.2 square 
plus 17.3 square. Take a square root of that answer. 35, 35.7 meters per second. There's my final velocity. If I wanted to find this angle, once again, I would use tangent using my VY value as the opposite value. VX would be my adjacent. The only other thing this problem could ask you to find, it could ask you to find X, which is no big deal because we've already found time. So we would just use VOXT to find time. If it wanted us to find maximum height, we would just find this height and then use our third equation to find that, add it back to 45, and that's about everything we could find in this problem.